Some of us know the frustration of keeping on speaking about Jesus to some people and they are keeping on rejecting. After some, see, it's very, you know, when, when I stand here and speak, when I see people receiving the word, I also feel like sharing. The Holy Spirit will give me verses which I have not even prepared. Right? You'll, it'll be a flow. It'll be just like talking, right? Which is the case now. But, you know, I'm just saying, but if, you, if, if somebody is not receiving, then you will, after some time, you will just back off. You will back off. You'll try once or twice. After some time, you'll back off. But still you have to pray. That's why Paul continued to pray. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer is that Israel might be saved. He backed off. He went to the Gentiles. But he couldn't every day and morning and noon and night he would pray, Lord, do something for my brethren. This is the way some, I, know, I know many of us are praying similarly. I know so many of us are praying similarly. When God sees the lostness of the house of the sheep of the house of Israel. When God sees the lostness of the sheep of the house of his church, he sends his word. Come. Come. And these, the moment, these moments are God moments. These moments are divine moments. You have to catch it. You have to catch it when it's your moment. At the, at the heat of the day, when he was resting in his tent, Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw three people walking. Immediately, you should read the scripture. He ran. He told his person, you know, he, he took the calf and he said, prepare it urgently. You should see the action words. Now, 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 urgent. Ran. Hurriedly. That was his moment. Because one of them was Jesus. That was his moment. He could have said, well, it's hot, let the sun go down. By then, these people would have gone. He said, do not pass me by, please come. One day, the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in the burning bush. But he did not say anything. The bush was burning. The bush was burning. Even now, some people's hearts are burning. The bush was burning. But it says very clearly, Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. And when the Lord saw, it says very clearly, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, he called Moses, Moses. The moment he saw, this man is looking at me, that was his moment. That was his moment. All of us sitting here have had that. Moments when God called us. And we had the grace of God to say, I will examine this more closely. We had the grace to say, Lord, do not pass me by. Come into my tent also. And he came and made his residence in our hearts. There was a moment that day in Samaria, in the afternoon. And the woman realized this was a moment. And she said, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst again. One moment because Jesus had to go to Samaria but that was the only time. It was just for one person and of course later for the village but you know that was her moment. If she had said today now I have to I'm too busy I have to take the water come back for another refill I have to go back I have to fill three pots she would have missed her moments. For many of you today when you hear the word this is your moment. This is your moment do not take it lightly this is your moment. You have to seize the moment. You have to seize the moment. Bartimaeus was begging on the roadside. When, when Jesus and his disciples were coming to Jericho, there was a multitude following Jesus. He was a beggar. A beggar will ask 20 people and out of 20, one person will give him some change. So every 20 people, he will get some loose change. So if 40 people pass by, by ratio, he would get two donations. A multitude is passing by. This is like bumper sale day for Bartimaeus. Multitude. Multitude divided by 20 is a huge collection. He is feeling the pot. Oh, this pot is too small for today. I should have taken the bigger one. A multitude is 
especially when they are all following jesus when you are following jesus everybody is on the good behavior you want to be kind to the poor you want to be helpful you want to you know be nice smile you know we are all following jesus that time so that is the best time that you could have ever imagined for a good day in the office and jesus he asked what is this commotion people are following jesus we don't read about it but you understand bartimaeus has a crisis that you and i face on a daily basis should i go to work or should i go to jesus should i cry out arms please arms please or should i cry out jesus please jesus please should i go to work should i go to church should i read the bible now or should i switch on the tv should i pray now or should i go and play i mean he is battling a multitude is following he can retire when the multitude is gone he has to make a choice bartimaeus has to make a choice but the grace of god comes on bartimaeus and he says jesus son of david save me do you know something that was his moment because jesus would never go by that road ever again one time bartimaeus had one moment to cease one moment if he had missed that jesus moment he would have missed jesus forever can you imagine jesus never walked on that road again we have to seize our moments let's come back to the lost sheep we heard earlier i mean this is all god in the lord's leading the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me thank you for reading that he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still water green pastures means food still waters means drink if you stick close to the shepherd he will feed you and he will give you to drink if you are away from the shepherd you will still feed and drink but you will feed on junk and you will drink junk you will feed st- on stuff that will make you hungry you will drink things that will make you even more thirsty that's why many people are running after what they think is green pastures and still waters entertainment success money sex whatever something some thrill the new gadget whatever it is Jeremiah 2 it's amazing verse be astonished god is saying be astonished to heaven said this and be horribly afraid for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living water and have hewn themselves cistern broken cisterns that hold no water i am the living water i am the fountain of living water but my people forget the others my people have forsaken me and they have hewn themselves now they are making their own systems broken systems which cannot hold any water fountain of living water and broken systems which cannot there's a choice they have made god's fountain is always there but the people said no we will choose that i was listening to an ias officer speech you know some time back at least 45 minutes and at least thrice in that 45 minute speech he said you know i'm not sh- he's a very senior guy i'm not sure if this is what my calling is i mean he's not happy he's very successful but he's not happy with what he is i'm not sure if this is what i want to do thrice three times but if you come to jesus and say sir give me this drink lord give me this drink that i may not thirst again he will give you to drink it says that the water i shall i shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up to eternal life many of us are searching all of us are searching for that not all of us we have found it but many of those who are listening are searching for eternal life what will happen to me after i die 
I mean, we heard an amazing testimony from Kurin Uncle two weeks back. No? He's going for the operation and he's singing. The nurse is asking, why are you singing? But they have not seen anyone singing before they go for an, a major operation. And he's testifying over there. Amazing. If you drink the water that Jesus, the living waters that Jesus gives you, you will never thirst for reality again because Jesus is the truth. You will never thirst for the meaning of life because He is the way, the truth, and the life. You will never search for satisfaction and peace and joy because He will give you His peace. He will give you His joy. We heard that. He is not going to give you second right. His very own peace, His very own joy is what He will give you. That's why my peace I give you, my joy I give you. You will not be afraid of death because now you have eternal life. If you have not drunk this John chapter 4 water, you should drink it. There are two kinds of waters. The first water that you should drink is the John chapter 4 water. The water that will become in you of well springing up to eternal life. Unless you drink that water, you will thirst and you will thirst and you will thirst and you will thirst and you will, and you will go to your grave thirsting. But you don't have to do that. Right now in your living room, wherever you are watching, you can ask the Lord to come into your heart and find life. There is a second drink, John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. First was a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. This is rivers of living water flowing out from you to other people. Jesus is saying this on the Feast of the Tabernacles. You know the story of the Tabernacles, so I will not go into that. The Feast of the Tabernacles. One thing we heard last week. Jesus came on the middle of the feast, on the fourth day approximately. And he's waiting and watching. People are very busy. People are so busy in the Piranal. They are super busy from morning till late night. They are busy doing this and doing that, carrying the water, building, you know, living inside the booths. I mean, they are super busy. Like we are all so busy in church. We are so busy doing this, so busy doing that, so busy. So he waits. He doesn't say on the first day of the feast. He doesn't say in the middle of the feast. You do. At the end, after you have done everything, he now asks, if you are satisfied with what you have done these last few days, go home. Go home. But if anyone still thirsts, let him come to me. On the first day, you can understand people might be thirsty. But Jesus waited till the last day, last show, last minute to say, boys and girls, if anybody is still thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Jesus cried out. Jesus cried. Why did he cry? He knew these people are going to go out of this temple and they are going to go to home. They will go to their farms, they will go to their offices, they will go to their stock exchange, they will go to their you know, workshops, they will, do every, they will go to their kitchens and this is the last they will see of me. This is the last chance that they have to drink from the fountain of living waters. Jesus is just looking at the lostness of the people in the temple. He's not talking, we are not talking of some Gentiles. He's looking at the lostness of the people in the church and he's saying, if anyone thirsts, 
any man, any man, and every man who thirsts, let him come to me. He, he cried out. He's waiting for somebody. He's been talking. He's been talking. He's been sharing. Not me. He's been quiet. He's been talking to everyone. But you know, he's another piece of the furniture there for people. And nobody's bothered. Another rabbi. If any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And as the scripture says, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. How many people went to him? How many people went to Jesus at that invitation? I looked. I didn't find even one person. It is almost like, you know, Elijah is standing on Mount Carmel and saying, how long will you falter between two opinions? If Baal is God, worship him. If God is God, you worship him. But the people answered not a word. Jesus gave this invitation, but the people answered not a word. Not one person went to Jesus to drink. I cannot find any evidence of that. They had an argument, they had discussions, and verse 53, everyone went to his own house. The son of God is standing in his temple and shouting out, crying out, but not one person went to him too. Because we are all so happy with our religion. People are so happy with their, not one person went to him. This talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is different from the first where you have eternal life. But Jesus said, after that you need to come to me and you need to drink and you need to drink and you need to drink and you need to keep drinking. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a definite experience. If it was not a definite experience, Jesus would not have said, tarry in the city till you are endued with power from on high. How will I know? How long to wait if it was not a definite experience? Should I wait for one day? Should I wait for today? Will something happen to me? How do I know? How long should I tarry if it is not a definite experience? So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a definite experience. Paul asked the Ephesian church, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now when you believe, you get the Holy Spirit for sure. Because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot believe. Right? So everybody gets a deposit of the Holy Spirit. Paul is not talking about that. Paul is talking about, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Our rivers of living water, rivers, amazing, rivers, not one. Rivers of living water flowing out of, not the apostle's belly, but out of the believers, out of each one of our bellies, the rivers of living water flowing out to a thirsty world. To a thirsty world, we have the water to feed a thirsty world. So they said, no, we have not even heard of that. So he laid hands and they received. Are you saved? The answer is either yes or no. It can't be maybe. If the answer is maybe, then you are not saved. Have you received the baptism in the Holy Spirit? The answer is yes or no. It can't be maybe. If it is maybe, then you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is so much of real estate devoted to the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. I am surprised that people have a contrary view. Spiritless people have convinced lost sheep that there is nothing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does two things. One, he works in us to cause us to be born again. And then he does a second work where he will fill us with himself to overflowing. You shall receive power, power for service. You cannot minister unless you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These 11 disciples, minimum, spent three and a half years with Jesus, walking with him, 
eating with him, lying down with him, going on boat trips with him, going for holidays with him. They did everything with Jesus for three and a half years. What is the commandment that Jesus gave them? You shall be my witness. What is a witness? You go and say whatever you have seen and heard. Right? If today after this meeting, someone were to ask you, please witness to what the speaker spoke about today. It's very easy because you are here, you said he spoke about one, two, three, maybe you won't remember everything, but at least three things you will remember. To be a witness, what more did they need? They spent three and a half years, they saw everything that Jesus did. They saw, they knew exactly what time Jesus wakes up in the morning. They knew where he goes to pray, what time he prays, how often he prays. You know, the miracles he did, the healings he did, the deliverances that he, you know, uh, commanded. They knew everything. What, what is so difficult about witnessing to what you saw? You go to a, a courtroom and say, what did you see? The court will ask, the judge will ask the witness and he will say, I saw this. There was a white car going in front of the blue car. You saw that? Okay, fine. That's, it. That's the end of the story of the witness. To be a witness does not call for any great imagination. All you need is a good memory, right? You can witness to what you saw and heard. But yet Jesus said, for a simple job like that, Jesus said, tarry in the city till you are endued with power from my high. What was it? It's only the Holy Spirit that can prepare you to be a witness. It is not what you saw and heard. It is only the Holy Spirit that can prepare you to be a witness. Otherwise, they could have gone and witnessed straight away. But Jesus said, wait. What about Jesus himself? For 30 years, he was quiet. We, except for the brief you know, moment we saw in the temple, which I think served a purpose right now in, in a based on what we heard today. For 30 years, he kept quiet. Then in obedience, he went and got baptized. And if you read Luke chapter 3 carefully, after he got baptized, he prayed. And when he prayed, the Holy Spirit came upon him like a, in the form of a dove. The disciples could not go ahead, were not given permission to go ahead and wit just simple act of witnessing. Santosh I saw Jesus, yes, I spent time with him, this is what he did. Sasli Anjay, this is what Jesus taught on the Sermon on the Mount. I'm not, even, I'm not even allowed to say that till the Holy Spirit, till I am endured with power from on. Jesus himself did not step out one word. He did not hire one disciple. He did not make a simple state, single statement until he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If the apostles could not, if the Lord himself could not, how can you and I think we can minister without the baptism of the Holy Spirit? We saw last week, to wait on tables, the apostles chose, or the people chose some qualified, right? What is the qualification? Men of good reputation, men of wisdom, men full of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit to serve food. How much work, you know, who can't do that? There are so many people doing it day and night in our, I mean, right next door, there's people serving food without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if you want to do God's work, God's way, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But aren't people dying when we are waiting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? You will do more in one day with the baptism of the Holy Spirit than you will do in 50 years without the Holy Spirit. 3,000 people were added to the church in one short sermon. Once you are baptized, the Lord is the one adding. The Lord added to the church. The Lord added to the church. Some people will, I mean it's amazing. Huh? It's amazing. Some people say the baptism of the Holy Spirit was only for the apostles, for the early church, so that they could be established. Acts 2.39 For to you is the promise and to your children and to all who are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call unto him. To the apostles, to their children, to those who are far off. I mean it, it talks about people like us. To our children. To all who are far off. The promise. And what is the promise? The baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is explained in those chapters.
I prayed, you know. I can speak, like Paul says, in persuasive words of human wisdom. But that is dangerous. But he said, I want to speak in demonstration of, sp in demonstration of spirit and power. 1 Corinthians 2.4 you have to drink. Go to him and drink. He said, come, if any man, he did not lay any criteria, only my apostles, only the first church, only the 120 were there in the upper room. If any man at any point in time thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And as the scripture says, out of which the believer's heart shall flow, rivers of living water. It is for everybody. 